So continuing on our discussion of classical time series analysis, before I dive into actual uh, time series models, I want to talk about uh, some descriptive approaches that are commonly used to describe uh, time series data. And a lot of them are actually focused on things like smoothing and detrending, which are aimed to remove the trend because we just talked about in the definition section um, that the, <clears throat> you know, the, the a lot of classical time series methods are based on this uh, assumption of secondary second order stationarity that, that the trend has been removed. There's only you know what remains is just a constant trend mu, uh, and, and again that assumption of, of that the covariance is only a function of the distance in time. So diving in, let's talk first about smoothing. So the most simple version of smoothing is uh, to calculate a moving average. And the idea of a moving average is that you look at some window of some width that's you know, defined by the user and you calculate the mean within that window. Uh, and then that window moves across the time series. And as you move across the time series, you calculate the mean. And so this green line over here is that running mean through the data as you move this window. And you can imagine that if the window is very narrow, that the moving average is going to uh, follow a lot of the wiggles in the data. It's not going to smooth it very much. Uh, but if you increase the width of that window, you're going to get uh, a progressively smoother and smoother uh, surface. You're going to, you know, not only will you start removing noise, but you'll start removing pattern. Uh, and in the limit, you are taking the mean across the whole data set, and you just have a single constant. <clears throat> So the idea of a moving average is, is pretty simple uh, and, and pretty common just to, to get a feel for uh, a time series and to kind of under, try to take a, a simple first approach at trying to figure out what in that time series is signal but, and what in that time series is noise. So moving on from this, the simplest moving average, uh, another thing that's often done is a, a weighted mover, moving average. So in the simple weighted average, within that window that we're looking, all points are assigned the same weight. We're just calculating a simple mean. In a weighted moving average, we assign weights to different points uh, within that window. Uh, the weights have to be symmetric and, and sum to one. And so here is an idea of a, a moving window that's width seven. So zero being the, where you're centered on, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three. And I've given the most weight uh, to the center point and progressively less weight going out. Uh, these sort of moving averages, you know, you could use any function technically, you know, one that would be particularly common would be something like uh, choosing the Gaussian distribution uh, as a smoother. Um, triangular distributions are also sometimes used. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, the sum of all of these individual weights sum, sum to one so that when you do a, a weighted average, which is just you know the weight times the value uh, summed up that you get something that uh, yeah has a, has the weight summing to one, which is a key requirement of any weighted average. Uh, to generalize a little bit beyond that idea of of a weighted moving average is the idea of a filter. A fil filter is a uh, any function that is moving forward uh, through time. Uh, that assign, in this case assigns weights to different points within a window. Uh, but in, in the idea of a filter, the weights uh, do not need to be symmetric and they um, do not need to sum to one. That said, it's pretty common to choose them to sum to one, but they don't necessarily need to be symmetric. So it's a, a more general, it's a generalization of the weighted moving average. Um, in fact, you can use a weighted move aver moving average as a special case of a filter, but you can also uh, filter more generally. So in R, the function, a handy function to do uh, filters and weighted moving averages and simple moving averages is just the filter function, where x is your time series of data and k is your vector of weights, also known as your kernel, which is why it gets the letter k. So in this case, uh, in the plot we had before, we assigned weights that sum, sum to one. Uh, so here would be uh, an example of a, a window that's with um, with five instead of with with 
seven, and here we have a weight of you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, which again is, this one is symmetric, and so that would give us a weight of moving average, but it wouldn't have to be symmetric. And if I wanted to do is just a simple moving average, I could set all of these to equal. So it could each go to, to just 0 0.2, and it would then sum to one and give me it as a simple uh, weighted average. Some other approaches uh, to smoothing are to fit polynomial regressions as a function of time. Um, so as we learn, when we learned about polynomials, if you you know fit a high high enough degree of polynomial, you will you can actually make it go through every point in a data set. Uh, but if you fit a, a lower order than that, you can capture a lot of uh, wiggles in data. So here's an example of a arbitrary time series. In this case, fit with a tenth order polynomial. So from you know, a, a, a intercept up to t to the 10th. Um, we're, again, just this, in this case, just doing this simply through LM. Um, and since the goal of smoothing is not to actually test a hypothesis, but just to kind of try to remove the trend from data, we're not actually usually going to do a hypothesis test. We're not trying to interpret the p-values here. We're just doing this in order to smooth the data. Uh, generalization of the polynomial approach uh, that actually combines the idea of the, the polynomial with the idea of a, a moving average is the idea of a, a local regression uh, within a moving window. So if you fit a regression model uh, to the points within a window, uh, and then you move that window a little bit and fit another regression model, and you move that window a little bit and fit another regression model, and you connect all those regression models together, you get this uh, this idea of a, a, a lowest curve, which is a locally regression within a moving window. Um, when this is done, the window width is usually much larger than a simple moving average, uh, but it because you are using the polynomial as as a smoother in addition to using the moving window. Um, and then the, the generalization of this uh, to a, a weighted version of that, where you weight the points closer to the center of the window more and, the, and towards the edges less, the same as we did the moving average, but now we're fitting a polynomial with those weights is known as a low S, uh, with the W there being for uh, the weighted. And in R, there's a simple function called low S. And in fact, you've encountered this uh, probably before. It, it's a very common function used to fit trend lines, such as in R's default function when, uh, for plotting residuals in a linear model. You know, the, the functions used to fit trends through the residual are, are simple lowest curves. Uh, here's an example, again, example time series, uh, fit, fitting a, a, a lowest curve with the first one uh, using a window that's two thirds of the width of the data, uh, and the second one using a width that's uh, one quarter of the width of the data. So we can see that it's, uh, again, smoothing through that data. So uh, to wrap up, and before moving on to other descriptive approaches, there's a bunch of different options uh, for smoothing. They're not uh, intended to be hypothesis tests. They're not intended uh, to, to really ask deep questions about the data. They're, they're explore, usually descriptive exploratory approaches and, and also as well as approaches that are sometimes used just to you know, try to remove trends uh, from data uh, before doing additional time series analysis.